All right, so last time we were here, I'm pretty sure there was just wood out. Yeah, um, just wood. I think we had a roof, but that was pretty much it. So basically, you guys made a lot of progress, it yes. looks like, from the outside in yep. the last couple of weeks or so. What was the design process, I guess, for the outside? I see the board and batten, and not really any siding on the front of the house at all, really. No. Yeah, so the, the buyers on this house, they wanted the, the vertical board and batten on this, so that's what we did on the front. On the sides, we did the vertical siding, um, and they really wanted that white and black look, so we tried to maximize that as much as possible. I mean, I think we did. Black door, black trim around the windows, black garage door, and we even brought in like the darker coal gray um, on the trim underneath uh, all the uh, siding. Right, so you got the dark um, stack stone for like, on the bottom. Yep. And then I used to see you guys also do, uh, added uh, the soffit lights, which is a nice little touch yeah. that a lot of people really don't add, but just gives it that nice effect at night. Yeah, yeah, at night it really makes everything pop. Now that you you know we, the buyer bought this pre pre you know pre going to market or yep. pre finished for example, what is the benefit, you know, for somebody working like yourself that the client really gets? Like they get the what were they able to pick from? So yeah, so the, they're, they're able to pick their doors, they're gonna be able to pick um, their fixtures, their finishes, be able to pick the colors of the countertop, the any of the backsplashes, uh, the stain on the wood floors. I mean, you name it, they really they can make it like a custom home for themselves. You know, normally when we build houses like these, we're gonna go spec where we try to do like appeal, to the, masses. That, appeal <laughs> to the masses. But in this case, they can, you know, have a custom home right. um, without having to pay, let's call it custom home prices, which right. can be through the roof. And now is this something standard? Cause I remember when we originally got the house, this was a small driveway, so now you, you Obviously enlarged it a little bit. Yeah. It looks like, right? Yeah. So we've got a we've got a double uh, car uh, wide driveway here now at the house, uh, single car garage. But you know, this was something that the buyers really wanted. They have multiple cars. They wanted to be able to to be able to park inside as well as outside. Um, but you know, I, this is all pretty standard stuff that I'm looking to do now. You know, I, I really try to build every house that I do. Where if I don't want to live here, then why would I want to sell it? <laughs> right. Um, and for me, you know, I got a couple of cars as well, so I really need to make sure that you know we, we make it feasible and, and easy for, for our buyers. For a corner property here for everybody that doesn't know, yeah. how come the fence on on the corner of the side of the property is what's a four foot fence? Four foot fence over there. Yeah. What, what's the reasoning behind why we had to put a four foot fence on the corner over here? So so Town of Oyster Bay basically required that as long as you're within uh, the line line of the, 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 the actual building, the structure itself, we can stay within six feet. But on corner properties, anything beyond that, we have to go to four foot. Uh, I think it's an arbitrary rule. Personally speaking, I think you know, any buyers that want to have some privacy, they should be allowed to do a six foot fence. But, you know, town won't allow it. So, you know, we try to get around that by doing the four foot fence, but then we're going to do some privacy hedges right behind that. To make so, it you know, give you that green fence. Exactly. Yeah, I think I think what they said you had to do that because they say it's a, you can't see if you're turning the corner yep. or something of that nature. And they're like, oh, it's a, it's a hazard, you know, safety hazard you can't, when you're driving. So everybody that lives on the corner always has all the crazy hedges going exactly, up there. Yeah. Well, it ends up being the same thing at the end of the day. But. Yeah, you still can't see regardless. <laughs> exactly. So, all right, let's go inside and see what progress we made since uh, we were here last. Let's do it. Since we've been here last, I'm pretty sure, obviously sheetrock wasn't done. Nope. Windows were not in. Correct. So, really, electric probably wasn't even roughed in yet. I, I mean, insulation so. wasn't done. Nope. I think it was literally just bare bones still on yeah. the inside, right? Yeah. So, what, what happened since then? So, since then, uh, like you said, we did all the window, uh, the windows were all put in. Uh, we had our plumbing and our electric rough all done. We had our uh, rough electrical inspection, which passed. We had our plumbing rough inspection that passed. <laughs> I had my insulation go in, and originally we were gonna go with bad insulation, uh, but then I decided to switch from my buyers and we put in all foam insulation. So from the basement yeah, actually, to the roof. You can see it actually right in here. Yeah, it's all it's all foam insulation. Um, and the benefit of that is it just makes the, the house much, much tighter. Uh, it gives it much better uh, energy efficiency in the house. Uh, and it's just a better product overall. Right, so double the price, but worth it in the, in the end, right? hundred percent, yeah. And it's, again, it's one of those things where, you know, in the dead of winter, uh, you know, you're not really gonna see your, your bills go as high as you really think you normally would with bad insulation. Yeah, and so I saw the windows. Obviously, you put in Anderson, you know, the black Anderson windows. Yep. That everybody loves. And we don't we don't skip on the windows. These right are now. not Anderson 100s or 200s. We go with the Anderson 400 windows. So top of the line windows. Yep. Um, and then once you put the window in, you can see the the gasket, I guess, or the vapor barrier behind there, and then you do the spray foam all around, um, all around on top just to seal out all the uh, Any gaps? all the air. Yep. That looks nice. Yeah. Big windows. Yeah, huge windows. Huge windows. We had, uh, I think the the bill on the windows alone in this house was $25,000. Yeah, it's, that's that's no joke. And then <laughs> that was where the... Um, where the fireplace is going to be going. Electric fireplace, right? Yep, electric fireplace. So electric fireplace over here, and then... 
We're in the dining room now. Okay, right. So this yeah. was where the dining room was going to be? Yep. So this is your return air thermostat line? Yep, thermostat line over there. And then right behind you, you walk into the expansive kitchen. So for people that haven't been following along, what was the, what was the layout for the, for the kitchen? How, what are we looking at? Yeah, so uh, it's going to you know, start at this corner, go all the way around. So we're going to have your sink, dishwasher, corner cabinets. Uh, my buyers decided to go with the cooktop range and gas over here so that we have working cabinetry underneath. We're going to have a commercial exhaust vent going out because they like to cook. Uh, and then over here, we are doing the double oven where it's going to be a microwave combo on top and then the oven underneath. Uh, we're going to have some base cabinetry right over here. And then we're going to have the refrigerator over here. Refrigerator in the corner yep. over there. And then right where we're standing over here is going to be an island with a wine fridge. Island with a wine fridge. Yep. Oh, fancy. Yeah. <laughs> and then this is for pot filler? Pot filler. Yep. Everybody's doing the pot filler. It's so much easier. I wish I had one in my house. I still don't. <laughs> and then, so over here, this was what when we were originally talking about was going to be the like a mudroom, mudroom, but also you'll have laundry yep. on the so main yeah, floor, so we, right? Yeah. If we enter it over here, we're going to have uh, laundry, stacked laundry over here. We try to maximize all the space that we can. So stacked laundry over here inside the mudroom. We're going to have all built-in cabinets through here with a bench underneath and, and uh, an area for people to put their shoes. So you know everything is really maximized for the amount of space and efficiency. And then my buyer's actually doing something a little bit fun that I don't normally do is we're doing a door over here, but it's gonna be on what's called a bomber hinge. So it swings both ways. Mm. Uh, kind of like the door that you see in restaurants, but we're gonna kind of you know, we're gonna match the style of all the other doors in the right. house. Uh, so that way, you know, in either direction it opens and closes. So it's a lot easier for people to pass through. Yeah, that's that's you you pretty much never I've never seen it in a house yet. Yeah, so. It doesn't happen. It's, it's a heavy door, it's almost a 70 pound door because it's yeah. solid core wood. Yeah, so it's basically like one of the doors like you said in a restaurant, one yeah. of the servers go in and out both ways. Yep. It's yeah. basically gonna be a, a fancy one of those. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, let's check out the the, be the bedroom sizes on the main floor, because last time you couldn't really tell. So they did something different. They decided to keep this open. Yeah. This so, was a bedroom, right? Well, uh, yes and no. So they, this was a bedroom. They're making this into their living room. Uh, they want an area where they can have like a bar set up in the corner and kind of host people additionally. Gotcha. So they wanted the, the formal the Exactly. Formal room. Yeah. So we're making this a formal and we're actually going to be doing a French door over here. And I'm, I'm working on finding out if we can do an all metal and glass French door, if we're going to go with the wooden glass French door. Gotcha. Uh, so what's the difference between some people that are doing um, like the halo brown bracket lights, you know how they put the brackets in, and then some people are more going to the more fact where you could just cut the hole, put the box in, connect the light, and it just like has the two clamps yep. that yeah, go in clamps, yeah. that I feel like everybody's using. What's the main difference between the two? Uh, honestly, for me, I think it's really just, it's just ease of use. I mean, everything else as far as the spec goes is pretty much it's the same. same right? They're using the same amount of energy. Um, you know, they're just like structurally sound. These are so much easier. Like you don't yeah. have to nail anything into the studs. You don't yeah. have to do anything. You just kind of pop it in and go. plug in the box and flip two yeah. Brackets. And if you ever have to replace them, you don't have to open up the entire ceiling. Right. You know, it's so much easier to replace. You can just, the, the box fits right through the hole. You can just disconnect and then reconnect a new one. Yeah, because I mean, literally, that's the, that little box literally is the only thing that, that's, that's connected to the wires and that just connects to the LED light, right? Yeah, and that's everything. Double closet for like coat closet when you first walk in. Yep, and then, and then over then, here, all these wires are, um, I had my, my AV guy come in because these buyers, they wanted uh, uh, a central alarm system and they wanted some speakers and stuff. So we pre-wired everything for them. All of that is going to go into this closet over here. So they'll have like a central location. For everything again, another benefit of yep. buying pre, you know, pre Peace. when everything is open and you get to customize. All wires are in much easier when all the walls are open. Yep. Um. So now they have everything in a centralized spot ready to go for them when they move in. Nice big first floor bathroom. Nice floor, first floor bathroom. So you got stand up shower. Um. What's it? The wand. The wand. Yep. The ceiling height is going to have a big uh, shower door over here as well. The uh, sliding shower door over here. So nice big entry space. Uh, my buyers, they want to have their, their, their mom move in. So, you know, this will be perfect on the first floor kind of. That's why no bathtub or anything. They just exactly. need a shower for. Yep. And then they're leaving this as a bedroom. Yep. So this will be her bedroom. So, they, you know, a nice big bedroom. Oh, for the mother. Yeah, for the mother. We added a second window in the back over there because she likes to open up the windows and get some fresh air going in. So we added a little small oh, so the end there. Of, yeah. End. I was going to do a bigger one over there, but then, you know. She, for the well, bed. I thought about, you know, what an area for a nightstand or something. Right. I don't want that to be in the way. 
Nice. Before we go up, I see obviously they're covered, but you got what, what white oak uh, staircase or what kind uh, of staircase? This is going to actually be red oak. Red uh, originally, oak. I do white oak, but they're going to want a darker stain, so we went with a red oak staircase on this, but two inch thick on the red oak. Um, and then this will be stained to their preference, and we're going to have nice modern uh, looking uh, stair balusters and railing over here as well. Gotcha. So, th do they put a railing on the side or do they just put one towards the, no, it's gonna be all, all the way up? The side and it's going gonna, it's gonna to kind of catch down here and then go down the rest of the way. Gotcha. So, this is. Brand new, to, and that pretty much does everything. You do the, you stain the top, you stain the top, you stain the, back. the faces, yep. you stain everything. Yep. <laughs> this was the master, or yep. this is the master. So Correct. talk about the master, what it's done. So obviously you got all the light, and so assuming these ones are for like the speakers that you mentioned, or? Uh, no, so these are just uh, for the, the HVAC over here. Uh, we didn't do any speakers up here. They actually wanted to do them in the basement. Gotcha. Uh, but we've got the four lights. We've got the center. We did a nice tray ceiling. So we really got the height that we had talked about in the past. Right. You can really see it now that the drywall's in. And then, you know, throughout the rest of the master, it's nice and big, which, uh, you know, once you have the drywall and you can really see the size uh, yep. of this bedroom. Um, and then, you know, again, same thing. We kind of thought out, you know, everything that we wanted to do. So if you look back here, they wanted to put a, a king size bed in, so we, we made sure we had some uh, electrical uh, sockets in areas where it'd be easier if they put their uh, uh, their their bed and all their stuff, you know, oh, where they can shot of all the spray foam. Yeah, basically this spray foam is done throughout the entire house, so this whole house is pretty much airtight. So it's you know, in terms of rating, you're not going to have to worry about losing heat, losing the cold AC. Uh, it's definitely. 10 times more efficient, I would say, probably than oh, yeah. the standard insulation that people used okay. to use. And then this was the uh, the ensuite bathroom. So, yep. so you got double vanity. Double vanity. We're going to have double vanity, toilet, toilet over here, and then this shower. is going to be the stand up shower. And we do a piece of privacy glass going up over here. Um, so it separates the toilet from everything else. Um, and then, you know, nice big shower head over here, the wand again. Um, and we're gonna do, you know, same thing that I've done in other houses where I do the backlit mirror over here, the fog, you know, fog-free backlit mirror over here. Right. So it really, really shines and makes the, the bathroom look beautiful and spa-like. So what's the difference now that for people that don't know between, they see over here, they walk into a bathroom, they see sheetrock, right? Yep. And then they see, the cement board. The, the cement board. Rock, right? Yeah. What, so what's the difference and why is you'll see sometimes this on floors? Correct. And then you'll see sometimes this in the bathrooms. What's the difference between when you see sheetrock and the Dura rock? So the Dura rock is not water permeable, meaning, you know, when we put this on, we're still going to do like a red coat of waterproofing on top. Um, and then you do your tile. And the benefit of that is, you know, forbid there's any break or any issue, you're not going to have water going behind that or, or causing the Dura rock to really soak up. For something like uh, uh, drywall, they make them, you know, mold and, and, and maybe mildew repellent. Right, yeah, but so it it's mold, still, mold resistant. Right, but it's still, <laughs> yeah, resistant, not even repellent. But uh, <laughs> it'll still soak up that water and that really what ends up causing the mold behind those walls. Uh, for something like dirt rock, you know, you're not going to have the permeability. So it's a lot easier uh, to manage as far as any kind of waterproofing that goes. And it's necessary in areas we're going to have direct wet walls going. So basically, where, where do you usually see dirt? Obviously, you'll see it in maybe if you're putting tile on the bathroom floor. Yep. Yeah, so tile on bathroom floors, uh, bathroom T walls. Bathroom walls. Um, you know, even if you're doing, like, let's say in the laundry room, mudroom down there, we're going to be doing tiles. So we're going to put this down underneath that. Uh, it's also a lot easier to then adhere the mud. Do before people the tile put Dura Rock throughout the entire house if they're putting tile throughout or? It or depends. You depends. Uh, mo you should. Let's put it that way. You should. Uh, some builders don't. Some do. Um, I think, you know, it's definitely necessary to do that. Um, it, it really, it just, it gives you peace of mind, if nothing else, right? It might right. cost a few dollars more, but it really gives you peace of mind. You can also see Durac being used outside, right? So if you have any areas and outside, then, you can do that. So obviously, for people that don't know, this is called a shower niche. Yep. So there's many different ways people make these, right? You can buy a, a one that's like almost like prefab that you then get the top, you tile this, right? Yep. Or you could build out your own out of wood if you want right. like a custom size that didn't yep. make it. Yeah, so so what we did here is we, we got the, the pre-made ones that we kind of built in, so that way we have an area for framing as far as where we want the niche to go. Um, ultimately, you know, if the buyers or anybody wants to change that, you know, we already have now set this area, so I can, that can always come out with a couple of drywall screws that it's in. Right. And we can still frame out a bigger one or a smaller one. So it's I wanted to have this totally set. customized. Yeah, it's almost like a template that I use. That way it's there and I know that this is where it's going. Right. So even if we need to change it, we still can. 
And then in the bathroom, obviously still you got your 400 series Anderson windows. Correct. But these windows look a little bit different to me than the windows were downstairs. Yeah, so these are, they're factory obscured, which means we're not putting like a, you know, a film or something that obscures them from the inside or the outside. These are obscured glass directly from the factory. That way, you know, you're sitting on the toilet or using the bathroom or anything because we're front facing over here, you're getting a lot of light, but you don't want your neighbor staring at you when you're in the bathroom. <laughs> so we really do that privacy glass over there. So the benefit of these is that we don't have to have any window dressings in the bathroom, right? Like we can get the full benefit of all the light coming in uh, into this room, into the bathroom, but we don't have to do any window dressings or any blinds or anything of the sort. Uh, and you really don't want that in a, in a bathroom usually. Right, so you still get the full on privacy. Correct. Without uh, having to have blind, I, which you really don't really see blinds. In the no, bathroom, you don't. Right? Yeah. People now don't I think about skip it. out on the, the, the windows in the bathroom, you know, outright, but this is the way to do it. They do close nice and easy. I'll tell you, yeah. you know, they do open and close very well. Uh, casement windows. And the best thing about casement windows is, you know, when they're closed and locked, good luck to anybody that's trying to break in. It's not happening. Uh, you know, with double hungs, you know, there's still a privacy factor, but uh, on casements, you can't, you know, once it's closed and locked, you can't pry that, that window open. Ah, no, that's, that's good. I also see upstairs in the hallway here, we have another, looks like what, sub panel? Yep, sub panel up here. So what's the benefit or why did we have to have a sub panel upstairs based off the 200 amp that we have coming into the house already. So the sub panel is required up here because you're going to have all your additional outlets and your, your lighting, everything that's basically controlled on the second floor. Okay. If there's ever a power outage or anything where you've got a disconnect, you don't have to run down to the basement. Now, is this something that here. was code that you yes. had to have a sub panel? Code requires it. What makes them say, okay, you're at the level that you needed a sub panel compared to just having the regular 200 amp breakers downstairs. So uh, 200 amp uh, upgraded service, because we're doing a new construction and a dormer, we automatically like, now you just hit the requirement. You know, any second floor, new construction, you're not just making necessary changes. You've got, you already have the walls open, immediate, you know, they want that sub panel. Up. So that's pretty much all new construction type builds now yep. that have full on um, big dormers, the houses they want like a- They want a sub panel. Sub panel to control everything upstairs. Yep. Yeah. Interesting. So this is what, just a uh, hundred amp, ends up being like a hundred amp sub panel? Yeah, yeah roughly a hundred amp sub panel. And that will control everything on the second floor. Yeah. Yeah. So everything is going to be wired up into here. So you, I mean, we have them labeled. You, you see the master bathroom GC, GFCI, you've got a bathroom GFCI. So everything that's up here is run through this. And then we've got a big cable, these two lines over here that are running down to, to the main the panel. Yep. To the got main it. panel. So this was the first bathroom <laughs> that's going to have a bathtub. Yep. Yeah. So this one is going to have a bathtub. It's the only bathroom that's going to have a bathtub up here. <laughs> Um, and uh, just an additional, it's gonna service the other two bedrooms that are up here. And then this is the electric you said, like you said, for the uh, mirrors? Yep, for the mirrors right over there. You're standing right in front of the sink, we'll have the toilet right over here, and then tub with the shower door. And Come again, along. Privacy, privacy glass coming in with the, the light. Into, into the, uh, for the bathroom. Yep. So then the rest of these were just the two framed out extra bedrooms, right? Correct, yep. Oh, this one gets a lot of natural light. Yeah, yeah, this one's beautiful. And again, like you did the tray ceilings in every in every bedroom. So yep. for people that don't know what tray ceilings are, what's what is a tray so ceiling? So tray ceiling is when you make a box up into the top of the existing ceiling to bring the height up a little bit higher. So right where that soffit is over here, we're at eight foot, but because of the tray ceiling, we're now at nine foot. Uh, and because most of the ceiling is at the nine foot, it really gives that height. But according to the approved plans, and I mean, obviously this is all done according to code and approved plans, uh, but you know, as far as the plans go, we were able to call for an eight foot ceiling and then still do a nine. So you get the best of both worlds. Yeah. So you get the height and you get the, and it gives a little look, a little yep. dimension to the room as well. So for the people that have been following us from day one, before we check out the basement, yes, yes this was the hoarder house for everybody that was asking. If you re recall, there used to be a door leaning into this space that we couldn't really see yep. anything. Um, when we first looked at the house the first time, this was piled with garbage. You couldn't even open the door. You couldn't even open the door. Yeah. yeah. I think I opened the door and I think I took one step and you literally couldn't <laughs> see anything else. So that literally turned into the kitchen yeah. and then the dining room and so forth and so forth. But now you actually have a finished basement for everybody that followed in the beginning. Yeah. There was water leaks, pipe burst. There was a total Damn. disaster downstairs that we can now go see what it's like because you're gonna be having a full bathroom down there yep. and everything, right? Yeah, yeah, we're gonna have a full bathroom down there. It's gonna be for storage purposes only. Again, uh, I like how you did this because if anybody wanted to uh, rent, <coughs> excuse me, um, they could put like a simple you know, wall up right here yep. and have a basement uh, to go straight down if they had family that they wanted to keep separate. Right. For a basement, I mean. Nice ceiling height. Nice, not bad yeah. for a ceiling height for a house that 
had an original basement. Yeah, we were right below seven foot, we're at six foot 11. Um, so, which is, you know, per code, it allows me to have this finished basement down here because we're under seven foot. Um, and so we're able to finish it out for the buyers and, you know, they're gonna be able to, to have storage down here and, and, you know, do whatever else they, they, they please. So basically you were, this was on the plans legally allowed yes. to have a finished basement and it met the square footage that you could have. Correct. Um, yeah, so the town of Worcester Bay is iffy and finicky now where if you have over seven foot, they take away from the amount of square footage you can have in the overall house. Anything under seven foot is still legally permissible. So we're able to finish the so you, just, you just hit the, just just hit the quota. Just hit it by, literally by an inch. So over here you can have living space. Yep. Right? Bathroom. Full bathroom back there. So if people recall way back when, there used to be a bathroom here, but they also had it running through to like their makeshift little kitchenette that yeah, they had yeah, at one point were, down they here. they were renting out back here. So there's a makeshift kitchenette back here and it was kind of attached to the bathroom. And uh, we obviously did away with that. Um, we made this bathroom down here a little bit bigger, a little bit more accessible. So this is gonna be four full, four bathrooms? Four full bathrooms. Four bathrooms, yeah, yeah all full, four full bathrooms. So plenty of places, plenty of toilets. And this, uh, you know, and, and we, we ran all new plumbing, so we dug up the entire floor down here, all new piping throughout, you know, we don't, we don't leave anything to chance, nothing was left from before. Uh, and then, you know, back here, you've got your boiler room. So uh, because this basement is finished, it also is gonna have four stair going through here, so heat and, you know, you don't see any baseboard down here. We have the full four stair. Yeah, so throughout. for everybody that doesn't know four, what four stair is compared to not having a baseboard or something like that, What's the main difference between the no baseboards versus the forced air that you're doing? Forced air is, you know, all you see all those grills in the ceiling or in some areas in, in the floor. It, you know, it's actual forced hot or cold air. Um, whereas with the baseboard, you know, essentially you've got piping behind the baseboard and that's just running, uh, you know, hot heated water through it. And then that's kind of the, the, the heat that you get off, generated off of that hot water running through the pipes is what provides the heat. And it's not really consistent. Um, you know, it's only, it's warmest only in the areas when you're closest to that baseboard. But with the forced air, you're getting that consistent uh, heat or cold air going through the entire, you know, area. You know, gotcha. Our so area. you'll have the boiler, I guess, on the wall, I'm, I'm guessing, like yep. one of the Navians well, or no, something Well, no, so like I didn't that. want a Navian because uh, we're actually going to do a tank over here. And the reason being is with the Navians, you just don't get consistent hot water. Got it. Whereas with a tank, you know, you have that reservoir. Unlimited hot water. Yep. Well, you have a long, you have 30, 40, 50 gallons of hot yeah, water ready. Exactly. And then the, the hot and cold air all come out of the same ducts, right? Correct. So you only have one, 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 duct run. one duct run for everything. Yeah, correct. And this is just gonna be as just family space or whatever they want, a yeah. recreational space. Yep. So what can we expect to happen from now till maybe the next couple of weeks when we come back out? What can we expect uh, to really transpire from now till then? Yeah, so uh, next week we're gonna have our tile started. So all the bathrooms are gonna get tiled, the mudroom's gonna get tiled, the basement's gonna get tiled. Uh, once tile is done, I'm, I've already placed my door order, but before that comes in, we're going to have all our flooring come in. Okay. Doors, trim, and then, you know, we're off to, to running to the end. So we're going to have our, you know, vanities, fixtures, all those things. So within the in. next couple of weeks, will cabinets be in? Yep. Cabinets should be in, tile should be done. Correct. Wood floors in or partially in partially or in. something of that nature. Yeah. And really, I mean, getting towards the home stretch at this point, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm starting the clock where I want to be done with this in eight weeks. Eight weeks from, from where you see it now till handing over the keys. Exactly. So if you have any questions or you want to potentially build your own property or you want to see another property that's off market as well, shoot us a message, shoot us a DM, fully customizable. Um, if you have any questions on what to expect on the next episode, leave us a comment below.